Hey everybody, welcome to episode 23 of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, and uh, on this special episode, I should be giving you a brief Lit RPG year in review, so make sure you stick around to the end of the podcast and the episode to hear that. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing and uh, new releases that came out this week, or this week and last week. There was an overflow. Um, the Way of the Clan, Book 5, Rule of Valdira. Uh, Grimgar, Fantasy and Ash, Volume 1. The Way of the Outcast, Mirror World, Book 3. Also, Dexterity Build, Episode 2. And Kingdom, Desperate Times, a 49ers Little Pretty Novel. That was Stalwart Souls Online, The Player Killer's Mark. And Digital Shadows, Witchtown. So those are the ones I'm reviewing or letting you know about this week. <laughs> To begin with a recent story of uh, well, me. Uh, I recently had a chance to correspond with Justin Miller, the author of the Dive Books and the World Seed series on, on Amazon. Um, and he was nice enough to answer a very few questions about why he writes, um, what motivates him to, to do so, what his future plans are. And he even mentioned what he's planning to do with his latest online series, World Keeper. Um, you can read the full article on our site at keepuspodcast.com or littlebreachpodcast.com. They go to the same place. Um, and of course, he also answered a few of his readers' questions as well. So it was really interesting. He had really funny answers. Um, I'm, I'm a little sad that he, he wasn't able to do an audio or a, uh, a podcast video interview. But hey, written so works. You get the answers to the questions you're looking for. And again, uh, very funny answers sometimes. Okay, uh, next bit of Little Pretty News. Uh, Alaron Kong has created his uh, uh, latest book trailer for the Chaos Seed series. Uh, it's kind of cool. I'm a little jealous, to be honest, but in a good way. Um, I have a link in the show notes. You're probably watching if you're watching the video version of this already. Uh, but the music adds a nice little tone to it as well. I'll have a link in the show notes for it, or you can just go search for Alaron's YouTube page, Lit RPG. Uh, and our last little bit of Lit RPG news, the author of Adventures of Terror... Um, is producing an audiobook version of the lit RPG novel with Jill Smith as the narrator. While it's very, still in the very early phases of production, uh, the author, me, <clears throat> has put the first 15 minutes of the audiobook on, uh, on my site. So the link will be in the show notes and, uh, I'll play you a little tiny sample though right now to just whet your appetite a little bit. Morning, sleepyhead. Welcome to Tara. The sound of another person so close to me sends a jolt of adrenaline through my body, and I sit up, frantically looking for the person that spoke. While thoughts of drunk-dialing former crushes... Okay, there mind. we go, folks. That's it. Um, that is not broadcast live. It's added in post, so if you look at the funny faces, they might not match. Uh, but that's going to be it for Lit RPG, folks. We're, uh, that's it. Um, we're going on to upcoming Lit RPG just for January and February, though. Anything that's up on pre-order on Amazon, here it is. Uh, the video game Polyne Tester, the first book in the Dark Herbalist series, is out January the 3rd. Um, You're in Game, a lit RPG source from best-selling authors, January 20th. The Dark Paladin, book one, February the 7th. Sucked into an RPG, is that on February the 20th? And Sp Spites Nuts. Second book in the 49er series is out February the 28th, 2017. Now on to new releases and reviews. Okay, in new releases and reviews, first book I'm talking about today is going to be The Wave of the Clan, book five, uh, World of Aldera. Uh, I would really wish that this, some of these would get different titles instead of just numbers, but that's me. Um, I'll read the book description for Amazon. The online game of Aldira, an enormous mysterious world, readily accepts anyone into its arms with guaranteed endless adventures, epic battles, and fabulous treasures. Countless clans fight fiercely for land, participate in wars, spin intrigue, and lead spy battles. And somewhere out there, in the endless expanse of Aldira, the adventures of Rosgard continue. Thanks to fate, and his own personal stubbornness, he's become the great navigator, destined to lead the naval armada and guide it directly to the lost ancient continent. Uh, my opinion on this, it's 224 pages, $5.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, always a big plus. 
Um, now this is less a review and just a notification that it's out. I haven't been following the series personally. Um, it lost me after about book three and I haven't gone back. Um, but fans of the series really seem to like it. Um, it has mostly four and five stars on uh, reviews on Amazon in the U S. Um, of course there are always complaints, you know, sprinkled in there about, um, translation and grammar errors, but that's something the series has been suffering from since book one. So, um, shouldn't come as a surprise that it's still there in, in book five. Okay. Moving on to Grimgar of fantasy and Ash volume one. Now this to me, um, is, is a delightful thing to see on Amazon. Finally, um, it is 268 pages, $6 and 99 cents. It is unfortunately not available on Kindle Unlimited. So, you know, you're going to go in there, um, with a high, slightly higher price set because again, it's translated from an entirely different language. So that adds to the cost of the book, unfortunately. Um, but, um, I liked it. I mean, uh, I would recommend if you're wondering if the series is worth it for you, download a sample. Um, or watch the anime. There's an anime version of this particular series. You can catch it on Hulu, I believe. Um, Crunchyroll. I'm not sure on that, but I know it's on Hulu. I've seen it there before. Um, and the volume one is only uh, goes through part of that first series. Um, so the animated series actually covers a little bit more of it, but eventually the books were going to catch up and surpass it. Um, I really enjoy it. It's a very dark world. It is a, a transported to a game kind of world um, where a group of high school students from, I believe, like Japan um, are transported to a world, a, a, a fantasy. Um, and there are gaming aspects incorporated, like they can gain levels. Um, they get experience from killing monsters, um, all that great traditional loader RPG stuff, except that this is a much darker version, um, permadeath. The game aspect doesn't extend to re respawn, unfortunately. So if you die in this world, um, you're dead, period, end of story. And this is a much grittier, darker version of that kind of um, little RPG fiction. Um, the characters aren't super powered. Uh, this is a very slow progression arc. Like through volume one of this series, um, you're probably not going to get past level one. Um, I believe um, in the translated version, it is actually broken up into arcs of levels. Like the whole entire first arc is level one. The entire second arc in the series is level two. And they continue like that. It's not, it's not easy to gain power in this world, at least for this particular group of, of transported adventurers. Um, it is again, brutal, um, realistic. There were some emotional tones in there that had me getting all teary eyed when I read it. Uh, when I read the translated version, the unofficial translated version, I should say, um, the animated version of this isn't, emphasize like little RPG stuff as much, um, like levels up, gaining skills, that kind of things. The novel version of this does do so a lot more, but I, I, I recommend it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but again, I, I read it previously. So, uh, but it, again, it's on Amazon. I'm just glad to see that it's there. On to our next story, uh, way of the outcast mirror world book three, um, big recommend right off the bat. I've loved the fact that the, um, Authors and translators um, at Magic Jump Books have been translating the book and you know, like very quickly after that, releasing an audiobook version of it. So I get to enjoy the story twice um, in a very quick pace afterwards. Um, it, it is uh, 433 pages, $5 and 99 cents. It is again, not unfortunate. It's not on Kindle Unlimited, um, but this price tag matches the page count a little bit better. Uh, now, for the last two books, Olger has been stuck at level zero because of the type of gaming account he has. He's been trying to get enough reputation in game to secure a loan in the world and finance his daughter's medical surgery. Now, along the way, he's been through adventures and gained some pretty cool, cool skills and race based rewards. He's a unique um, race within the game. Um, now, though, Olger, your favorite daily grinder, is back in book three. Uh, this time, he's a player. So he upgrades from uh, a resource gatherer to an actual player this time around. And it's a part of a much bigger plan and conspiracy almost to unlock major content in the game for players by conquering no man's land with a slingshot. That's kind of the weapon choice he gets. Um, I'm not going to spoil most of the story for you. Um, it's too nice and interesting to, to do that to you guys. I like you too much. Uh, but I'll tell you that I, I really like the series. Um, it hasn't suffered from a very common issue of over epicness, in my opinion. Um, a lot of series have an issue like they, 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 
have a great arc, but at the end of it, um, the character seems overpowered. So I have to figure out some way to make him even more powerful, more challenging. And the cycle continues until he's very quickly becomes uh, so powerful that nobody can challenge him. And that doesn't happen in the series. They're already into book three. And I never felt that the character um, was so powerful well, at all. He was actually not powerful specifically in books when he, because of his character, and he never got past level zero. Um, so those, there was always a limit there of how, how far he could go and, 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 and become, um, within the game just because of the type of, uh, system that was implemented as a game system within the story. But now he gets to Starly finally start leveling. Um, and I like the fact that that's that change. Um, you could actually start into the series at book three if you like that more traditional, um, leveling system this would be a great entry point for you um but i i like the first two books because they were different because the character was an everyday man who was just trying to make a living and find a way to finance his daughter's expensive expensive surgery uh through this um vr immersion gaming system and i, I like that about it um this is a good again a big recommend for me i like all the books i pick them up as soon as they're available so enjoy it on to Dexterity Build, a lit RPG serial, episode two, The Hammer Horsed Mountains. Um, this is from um, Stephen J. Shelley. Again, he authored the uh, previous lit RPG series, uh, serial series, Strength Build. This is a Dexterity Build. I think in the future we'll have an intelligence build, maybe. Um, that's my guess. Uh, but it is 44 pages, 99 cents. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, I'd only recommend purchasing on Kindle Limited because of the page size. But again, if you don't mind throwing a, a, a dollar US his way, I'm sure he'll appreciate it if you don't have Kindle Limited. But it makes more sense on Kindle. You can just kind of cycle through these without feeling like you're you're expending a lot of dough on a cereal. Uh, it is short and sweet. Uh, remember, in Strength Build, the play player Nick became a pixel runner, a streaming VR gamer, to secure a financial future for himself and pay for his father's medical care. He learned the VR game company was trapping real people in the game and using them as non-player characters. That was the big secret in, book, in the first series. Um, if you haven't read it, sorry, spoilers. Um, in Dexterity Build, Nick returns to the game not for himself, but for a to free a little girl who's trapped there, the daughter of Gideon, a man that helped Nick in the last season of the game. Now, this time around, Nick chooses a dexterity build instead of a strength build. It's a different way of playing, if you're not familiar with those gaming terms, about dodging, um, using weapons that uh, emphasize the dexterity stat in, a, in an RPG character build. Um, and, and to me, it feels like a... Um, it's similar to the last series and last season. And it's also different just because of the play style is different, but uh, the motivations of the character sort of remain the same survive, um, get views to, to, to stay alive and be popular. And at the same time, he has an external goal of saving this little girl who's innocently trapped by the evil, evil game company. Again, there's a short read. Um, you, you know, it'll, it'll be like, it's an hour's worth of entertainment for me but I'm not a super speed reader. So your mileage may vary, but I enjoy it. If you don't think that the 44 pages is worth the 99 cents or your time at this point, because you like longer stories, just, you know, wait a little while. The author tends to, after the series is complete or the, the season, um, put them together in a little omnibus at a slightly lower price point per book. So if you, uh, if you don't like it, just wait, it'll come out as a longer, longer story, but I do like it. And I look forward to reading Dex built episode three. On to uh, Kingdom. Um, this one annoyed me a lot. Uh, written by Adam Drake. Uh, I believe he authors another lit RPG-ish series. It is 300 pages on Amazon listed. Um, it is 99 cents and it is available on Kindle Limited. Now, quick warning. It's not really 300 pages for this particular story that's advertised. It's only about 60 pages or about 20% of the listed book pages, which is uh, an annoying thing that I'll get to in, the, in a minute. Um, now, uh, as far as the story goes for 60 pages, it's actually really decent. Um, the author does a really good job of making me care about the main character, uh, Robert, the janitor very quickly within like a few pages. I know that he has a dead end job as a janitor. He has a daughter he cares about, but he doesn't see her enough. Um, he feels guilty about that and he feels like he's too old of a man to change and go back to school or do anything to advance himself in that respect. Um, so I very, very quickly cared about the character enough, uh, to follow his journey in the story. 
Uh, now uh, he is summoned to a world where he becomes king. He can save the digital citizens from being deleted by gaining levels and expanding the Kalen's borders. And again, this is a, a much short story. So he, the author does a really good job of, of putting this all together very quickly and still including action, um, action portions of the story, which are decent. The story, uh, 460 pages, feels a little slower paced than I would have liked. But um, overall, it's a, it's a good little short story. Now, the thing that really annoys the hell out of me is kind of the way it was published. It left a really bad taste in my mouth. Um, it's listed at 300 pages uh, on Amazon. But again, only 20% is the actual story advertised on the cover. Um, I'll say that inside the first couple pages, the author says um, he includes bonus content um, at the end of the story that you can enjoy and that it's free. Um but I was expecting, you know, and this is bonus content. You expect it to be a small little portion of the overall page count. And in this case, it's 80% of the page count. So it's not really bonus content as much as it is the actual majority content of this novel. There's literally about four or five books um, from the author in there that are recycled from his other published stuff. And if it was advertised as like an omnibus collection from the author of, of his collected works or something, I would be cool with that. I would really, I mean, the price tag is not bad. It's like 99 cents. Assuming for the, the short story portion of it, it's, it's not horrible. Um, as far as much content I use putting out, it's again, not a bad, not a bad, uh, you know, ratio of money to page count, but it just, it just kind of irks me that it's, it, it feels whether the author managed to, not, it feels deceptive. And that it's not explicitly stated that the short story version of it is 60 pages and the other, you know, 100, 240 pages is, is old stuff that the author just kind of putting in there. It feels slightly deceptive whether or not the author meant for it to be or not. So I can't recommend this just on that. Um, but again, if you just, if you go into it knowing that this is a short story read that's pretty decent, feel free to go read it. Now, on to uh, Desperate Times, a 49ers lit RPG novel written by Matthew Sylvester. Okay, um, the long and short of it is it's 102 pages, though I have to let you know that the last 12 percentish is a sneak peek at book two. So it's, you know, this is kind of a, a better way to do this sort of story. Um, it's two ninety nine. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, now, just a big warning for you folks. Uh, there's a ton of cursing here. Uh, which is in line with both the liter- uh, military and shooter theme of the story. So it's, it's, it's content um, appropriate. I mean, it makes sense within the story, but if you're offended by a ton of curse words, uh, this might not be the story for you. Uh, now here's the synopsis. This is my version of the synopsis. Uh, world domination, a virtual reality game that is taken in the place of physical war in the world. However, an effort to create real life consequences of world war, <clears throat> Soldiers who participate get to die virtually 49 times, but on the 50th time, they are euthanized in their VR pods. Uh, should a soldier survive 100 powers, they're re- uh, 100 battles rather, they're released from duty and able to go back to the real world. Only the rules suddenly change because the European High Command says so. Um, anyone that hits 49 is kept permanently in game, even if they survive 100 battles. Now, the gist of the story is really that uh, a recently formed 49ers um, group regiment is sent on the special men to, receive, to rescue an intelligent asset. And, and the story is told from the perspective of several members of the regiment trying to accomplish their own in-game objectives and complete the mission. This leads to another uh, bigger mission that can potentially change the course of the virtual war. More battles, lots of action. That's kind of the theme of this story. Action, action, action. Now, overall, this series really felt less lit RPG and more lit FPS um, or literary first-person shooter, which is a thing I made up. Um, Most of the story really does focus on the gritty, descriptive action scenes and the fighting portions of this game and really less on mechanics or even character development. The story really has some good sci-fi elements, mechs, heads-up displays, plasma guns, vibroblades, even some hacking later in the story, which I really liked. Um, but uh, again, that, that, all that stuff kind of piles in there. Like the first 25% of the story, there's almost no mention of anything, uh, lit RPG ish. There's no mention of leveling game mechanics really. And it felt really more like a sci-fi fiction with a video game theme for that first 25% of the story. Um, so I was actually really worried coming into it that this wasn't really lit RPG 
but the elements play out later, so don't worry about it. Um, after that 25% mark, the novel very slowly reveals more RPG mechanics. Um, but they're always more along the lines of the RPG mechanics you find in uh, games like Battlefield or Call of Duty, where the emphasis is on killing, shooting, action. And sometimes there are some elements of RPG like uh, upgrading weapons, eventually leveling up, um, specializing in certain types of, 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 of fighting mechanics or fighting weapons uh, like snipers, uh, mech fighters, stealth things like that. You get development points as, as you kill characters or other players in the story. And, you know, they lead to uh, improving skills uh, or just getting new skills entirely. So those are the RPG mechanics. But again, even within the context of the story, they're very, they're a little lighter than I, I personally would have liked to have seen. I would have loved to see more detail in how the various options that are available to characters and some of the reasons as to why they chose those things and how they play together in a larger cooperative gameplay mechanic. Um, I would have loved to have seen all those things, but that's, that's me personally. I'm kind of a nerd for, you know, detailed skill systems and magic systems and, you know, weapon systems and that kind of stuff. Um, now there are other things that I did not see in the story that I would have loved to see more of like background story or character development. Uh, for example, I have no idea who the Chin Corey public really is. It's just a name for a bad guy. Um, I have no idea why they're invading great Britain what the consequences for losing the VR war game is. Um, none of that is explained. It's very much like bad guys, these guys, we're trying to defend. Here's some action and some RPG stuff is in there. Um, I also have no idea who most of these characters really are and nor do I care about them. And I'm not trying to be mean at all. It's literally, I, I don't have much information about them and there's no, emotional connection to most of the characters. I know their names. Um, I know some of their physical descriptions um, and I eventually some of their weapon specializations. And that's how I identify them. I don't know what motivates them. I don't know why they joined this game. Um, I'm assuming it, it, it's implied that they're conscripted, but why do they continue to fight? Um, you know, if someone killed, killed French in the story, I'd be like, yeah, uh, okay. Um, who gets his bot? And that would be, the end of my caring about the character, you know? So that kind of gives you an indication of, of, of the amount of character development that was established in the story, which I, I was, I was sad to see because it's hard to continue reading a story when you don't really care if somebody dies. Um, a few other niggling points that I have there. Um, uh, there's a lot of military language in the story and it's not really explained. Most of the time, it, uh, the author kind of assumes that if you're familiar with first person shooters and, this is not untrue. You are, are sort of familiar with these terms. If you're a military person, um, you're also going to be familiar with this stuff, but it's, it's, it's harder to appeal to a larger mass if you don't at least explain terms the first time you use them. And of course, abbreviations and acronyms in the story are completely not explained most of the time. Um, I know some of them, but I don't know all of them. For example, what's an APC? What's an VTOL? What's an LZ? MBT? ECAF? You know, none of these uh, acronyms are explained in the story. And to me, just to let your reader understand what you're talking about, you should explain them at least the fir after the first time you use them. But that's me. Um, overall, the story wasn't exactly my cup of deal. I had a nice time reading it. Don't get me wrong. I loved the action stories, the action portions. They were visceral. They were gritty. They, they were interesting. Uh, but that's the same way I feel about first person shooters. I, I like action stuff, but I don't play them for the RPG portions of their storyline. So if you like games like Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, um, more than like games like Mass Effect, um, then this story might be right up your alley. And that's my review. On to our next story. I know there's a lot. Uh, Stalwart Soars Online, The Player Killer's Mark. Now in uh, Stalwart Soar Souls Online is written by Kay Fairbird. Um, her name isn't really big on the title page on the cover, so I had to write it down. Um, it is 281 pages. It is $5.99, and it is available on Kindle Unlimited. Always a big plus for me. Um, now, to be honest, I had a very hard time staying interested in this story, which is unfortunate because I like the premise, um, which is maybe part of the issue for me. The characters sort of fall flat when I was reading them, and I, again... I had a hard time becoming emotionally invested in anybody, including the main character. Um, and those are sort of some of the issues I have there. Uh, the story also 
suffers from a comparison to sword art online, which has an almost identical premise of being trapped in a VR world where death in the game means death in real life. Uh, now the story is not a copy of sword online. I want to make sure that's clear. This is not just uh, a, a fan fiction. It is not a, a direct copy, but you can tell that the author probably took the premise of that popular story uh, and started um, writing from there, which is not uncommon, especially if you're a first time author or you're writing just from something you love. You have to have a basis of, 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 of starting your story at. And that's cool. Uh, it's just unfortunate that I kept comparing it as I'm reading the story to that other property, which I really, really love and I got really into and I'm a big fan of. Um, so the fact that I had to, I kept comparing it. Uh, was not in, in Star Wars Soul, Souls Online's favor, unfortunately. Uh, for example, in Sword Art Online, the guy who takes over the game and traps everyone uh, in it sets an immediate goal of accomplishing uh, for them to accomplish if they want to escape. They have to get to floor 100, they have to kill the boss there, and then they can escape. And so that kind of gives them motivation in Sword Art Online to level, to grow powerful. Not everybody does it, of course, but the the players who want to escape the most are, are the ones that are motivated to to grow more powerful in the story and to level and to kill monsters and stuff. Um, and that does not exist in this particular story. There's no, in my opinion, motivation for anybody to leave the starting town if they just want to stay alive. Um, and there's no like way for them to to know how to escape. It's just, it's a really vague as to what the point of taking over this game world is besides just a a, a crazy admin's masochism. Um, For example, players can't kill each other uh, with the exception of the game masters who are former game masters. They can be killed. Um, But the other players can't kill each other in player versus player combat necessarily. They have this personal shield that prevents it. Um, So there's no... You know, uh, that's another loss of uh, of motivation in players keep becoming more powerful. They can't be killed by anything except the environment and monsters and stuff. So they don't have to worry about, you know, bad players coming in, you know, just killing them. Um, and so there's no motivation for them to get stronger from the a- that aspect either. Uh, so again, there are, I, I think there are some missed opportunities in the story um, to create motivation for characters to grow powerful uh, and, and create character development. Um, there are some things I really did enjoy about the story, but they were mostly related to the points where the story wasn't trying to be like sort of online. For example, I love the politics in the North star guild. Um, I love the run through the dark forest dungeon. And I like the unique character classes, like the brawler character class in the story. When the story w- was trying to be its own thing and not, uh, um, being trying to be like sort of online, uh, as far as like a, a over, o- overarching story arc, I liked it a lot more. Um, so if, if that had been the story, the main story of, of this book, um, I would have enjoyed it immensely. Um, but in this instance, I couldn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. Um, I, you know, if I was going to rate it, I'd give it a five out of 10, pretty average, not bad, not amazing, but you know, it's in there. So if you're looking for something to read, this is the thing to read and it's on Kindle Unlimited. So you can give it a try without much uh, risk. Okay. On to our next story, Digital Shadows, Witch Down. Okay, this is the sequel um, to Digital Shadows. 259 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. It is, again, the sequel to the Lit RPG Horror Story, Digital Shadows. Now, in the first book, um, slight spoilers here, folks, um, players are trapped in the VR MMO horror game, struggling to survive against various creepy killer clowns and such. So there are a lot of horror monster tropes in there. Um, Alistair and some of the others, I should say Todd rather, and some of the other characters were able to escape um, from that game um, in in book one. Um, and in book two, Todd returns to the to the game voluntarily uh, to help other players escape by lighting the remaining soul lanterns so that everybody can try to get out. Uh, but this time they're up against some other new forces like witches. Um, now, if you like the first book, you'll like this one. It's a very similar theme. Um, just remember that this is a horror story, so there's lots of super, super graphic deaths and tense moments. Um, but that's kind of a part of the genre as a whole. But again, reading the story again, I was like, oh, yeah, there's a really graphic murders and deaths and dismemberments and things like that in here. So just a heads up, uh, if you're not into like horror fans and slasher films, this is probably not going to be your story. Uh, but if you're into this kind of books, this is totally up your alley, man. 
Um, and again, the thing, one small thing I didn't like about the, the second book is that it, they don't give you a recap or any kind of background as to why these characters exist in this world or really what's happening from the first book. So there, there was no recap which many people are going to find hard to to jump into book two without reading book one. So if you're, if you're interested in book two, you have to read book one, unfortunately. Um, or I should say fortunately, because it's not, it's not bad. Um, but there you go. That's it. Digital shadows. Uh, and that's it folks. I know it's a little longer. We have lots of stories, lots of interesting opinions upon. Um, but before you go, before we end the podcast, I want to give you a quick uh, review of lit RPG for the year. This is going to be the last uh, entry into the podcast for this particular year. Now, um, personally, I had a modicum of success with the Lit RPG podcast. I made some goofy Lit RPG videos. I interviewed some amazing authors this year, and I thank all of them for for talking to me. Um, I even published my own Lit RPG story that did pretty good. Thank you, everyone. Um, However, I have to say the thing I'm really the most proud of um, in this entire year is you guys, uh, the Lit RPG community. Um, we as a community have gone from a few isolated posts on Reddit and a couple of blogs to a community of almost 3,000 people on Facebook. Um, there were over, I counted over 250 lit RPG novels on Amazon, multiples of that on the Wheel Road and Wattspad and internationally translated works online. Um, and a lot of that came out this year. You know, just in the last couple of weeks, I, I reviewed almost 20 books alone. Uh, and, and quite a few of those have come from first time authors. Um, and to me, that's, that's really amazing. I have to say, um, and it's really only been possible because of you guys, the lit RPG community, um, readers, writers, um, we all come from various walks of life guys, but we've created a, a unique special community in my opinion. Uh, uh, we're, we're welcoming. We discuss things we love about the genre and give each other recommendations because we're enthusiasts and, and we like to share about and share about the things we're passionate about. So I, I love that about our community and, and sure. Sometimes the discussions devolve into weird theories about, you know, gnomes taking over the world, but you know, that's okay guys. Um, so I, I love you guys. Thank you very much. I have to say to every person who had the courage to pick up a pen for the first time this year, who pushed that or who pushed that publish button um, to every person that read some new author's book, uh, lit RPG book, or contributed to our growing community in some way. I'm really super proud of you guys and ladies. Um, and I'm especially proud to be a part of your community, our community, I should say. Uh, so I just want to thank everyone and, and let you know that that's the thing that I'm most proud of for the year. Um, and that's it. Hopefully next year, our community grows even larger and we can welcome more people that read and write lit RPG guys and ladies. Uh, thanks again for hanging out with me today. Uh, until we can again, remember to go read some lit RPG. Mm-hmm.